Welcome back, my name is Teresa and I'm very much alive. I really am today. I have an awful garbage filthy mouth where sometimes, just sometimes, I tend to use the word fuck as a comma. I know, intriguing? Yeah, you're probably gonna thumbs down this video. <laughs> I don't care. If you're not into that or weird stuff in general, then this is definitely not the place for you. Feel free to X out the video here. No harm, no foul. But I'll remember our time fondly. Y'all, I am so excited to do this video. Like, so excited. It's like Christmas. In today's video, I am writing the coattails of the lovely 90s Love Child and Smoky Glow. They both recently did a video where they roasted, roasted, ugly, ugly eyeshadow packaging. Basically my bread and butter. And I thought long and hard about my list. I really did. And I really wanted to be mindful of not picking similar palettes that these two lovely creators chose. So I believe there is no crossover. I believe. Anyway, I am going to link both of their videos down in the description box. Definitely go check them out. Definitely go subscribe and tell them I said, hey. Without further, further ado, let's go roast some motherfucking ugly eyeshadow palettes. Actually, let me backtrack. First and foremost, if you like any of the palettes that I'm talking about today, that's great. I am so happy for you, Julie. But here's the thing. This is all in fun, right? This is all in fun. Don't take this so seriously, please, for the love of everything. <laughs> please don't take this so seriously. And please, please don't get weird in the comments and try to like feel the need to protect these brands because I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. They don't give a fuck about you. They have your money. Okay, so stop being weird. <laughs> Just enjoy it, enjoy this. Enjoy it, have a good time. Have, a, have an adult libation, have some devil's lettuce. Have some pie, I don't care. Just relax, all right, have a good time. But just know that I love you. Yes, you. Let's talk about some ugly fucking palettes. Okay, the first one I wanna talk about, oh God, this gives me so much joy, Pure. <laughs> Okay, so Pure came out with something last year. Uh, I don't, I don't really know what this is. And technically, I kind of, it's not really technically a full eyeshadow palette. It's a face palette. So I know I'm breaking my rules, but whatever, it's my channel. I don't give a fuck. The Grinch, good enough to steal your face palette, right? Or something, hold on. I think that's the fucking name of it. Good enough to steal face palette and color changing lip balm set. <sighs> All right. I have a two part question right off the bat. What the fuck is this and who the fuck is this for? I'm assuming for children, right? Now, I know I mentioned this in my drunken stupor in my last makeup bingo where I talked about Pure and the Barbie palette. And I really believe that Pure's main mission in life is to capitalize on the nostalgia for 30 year olds. That is the only thing that makes sense to me. At first I was really gonna rag in the color story, but I actually think that Pure did a really good job creating a color story that matches like the shitty coloring of that movie. I actually watched the trailer of it because I haven't seen that movie since, I don't know, fucking whenever it came out. And I really don't have a need to go watch it anytime soon. But the colors in that movie is very muted and very dark. Pure did a really good job on emulating that within the palette. And I give Pure points for that. However, what the fuck is this packaging? This packaging comes in two parts. You have the top of it, which is very reminiscent to that diorama you made in third grade. Actually, let me take that back. It's when your mom made that diorama for you because you were being too much of an asshole and she didn't want to deal with your shit, so she sent your ass to bed and then she completed it for you. What, too real? Okay, anyway, the bottom half of this palette reminds me of going to your grandmother's house and your grandmother is so insistent on giving you food even though you tell her over and over again, you don't want anything, but she really wants to give you some food. And your sweet old gram comes over to you shaking a box of Russell Stover's chocolates that you know, you know is at least two to three years old. From where you're sitting on that plastic furniture, you could see that layer of dust right on top of the chocolate. And you know for a fact that is no longer nougat. If anything, it's paste from a demon dimension. But you can't say no to your bubby's face. You can't do that. You're not a monster. So you take one and you pray to every god possible that you do not spend the next four days sitting on the toilet cursing your sweet grandmother to hell. Again, I have a lot of repressed childhood memories, okay? Anyway, regardless, this whole thing scares the shit out of me. And to quickly comment on the lip balm, bare enough we have Lipstick Queen doing this and they made it like a brand for themselves and whatever. Don't do this, Pure, stop, just stop, don't do this, don't. All in all, the giant gross packaging, the true to story yet boring color story, and the puke 
green lip balm that turns pink when wearing. Pretty much screams dysfunctional Christmas. Good job, Pure. Okay, so Too Faced. All right, Too Faced came out with the Pretty Mess Palette. You remember that thing? Ooh, girl, let me, let's talk about this shit. I like the housewives. I know, I know. I like the housewives. I love me some manufactured drama. You have no idea. I really do love it. Something about watching old rich people whine about nothing just completes me. Now, when I heard this was going to happen, I got really excited because I was like, oh my God, Eric Jane, like I really love Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Like I'm all about that bitch. Like, yes, yes, yes. Fucking show me something fierce, okay? And when I heard the name Pat the Puss, I was like, oh, this is going to be fucking crazy. No, no, it wasn't. When I saw this whole release, I was like, Girl, we all know you're not hard up for that money. So what is your excuse for this? Who signed off on this? I refuse to believe she signed off on this. First of all, the color story, which is, you know, very boring, but very much in line with the housewives in general. They are all neutral biddies that love like that sophisticated splash of sparkles. However, do you think they wear fucking Too Faced? Actually, I take that back because there was one episode where I watched Ramona Singer of Real Housewives of New York break out a fucking dusty ass Too Faced peach palette and go to town. The same woman who also screams about having room temp Pinot Grigio. But yeah, I don't know. Anyway, now the most important thing is what the fuck is this layout? What the fuck is this? What is this? Is this a palette or is this operation? I'm afraid to touch any part of the pans. Otherwise, I'm just going to hear that eh sound. Listen, if you're going to make them skewed, at least make them go in the same fucking direction and make it fucking pretty. Like, I get it, this palette's called Pretty Mess. But this is a fucking ugly mess. There is so much wasted space in this palette, and it's driving me fucking insane. However, if you do rearrange the palette, it's pretty fucking boring. Which, frankly, is the worst crime of it all, considering how daring she is with her fashion choices. Anyway, this was a huge old ugly fucking mess. The next palette I want to talk about is from Urban Decay and it's the Kristen Leanne palette. And actually this is the palette that kind of inspired me to do this video and I want to say thank y'all because uh, I, I asked you like, hey, do you want to see this? And y'all pressed four and I appreciate that. You're listening. Thanks, babies. So I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. I feel like I got a lot of my points out in the last video. I want to give a shout out to Kelly Berry, who said, it looks like someone's Z palette full of shades they pulled out of other palettes before decluttering them. And Urban Decay charged us money for that. Hilarious and fucking true. Anyway, if you want to hear my thoughts about this palette, I'm going to link my last video up in the corner. This is the timestamp for you guys to go check out in that video. But I do invite you to watch the whole thing because it is pretty fun. But long Long story short, the layout's fucking disgusting. It should have never been created. Quality was good, but shame on you, Urban Decay. Shame on you. The next palette I want to talk about is from Benefit, and it's called the Vanity Flare Palette, which I think came out last year. This is terrible. Okay, this is fucking terrible. First of all, I was actually shocked to hear that Benefit sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes comes out with these really fucking, I don't even know, eyeshadow palettes, I guess that's what they're calling them. I actually saw swatches on someone who was like literally like me, uncooked chicken, and there was no pigment. Spooky, I know. So while yes, this color story is Sleepy Town USA, the inside of the packaging is very reminiscent to every Hot Topic palette I have ever owned, where it just is like a book and it's like the thin lines for the eyeshadow. It's like, what the fuck is this? No, and you're charging how much for this? Go fuck yourself. Benefit in general has boring packaging. If it's not some weird 1950s picture of a woman in some sort of fucking space cadet outfit or a chorus line, it's some boring shit like Dandelion, for example. The Dallas blush, which ironically looks like these condoms called Rough Riders uh, that I used to look at the packaging uh, when I would go into bodegas as a kid. Um, yeah. I don't know why that's the thing that sticks out. Spice ham sandwiches and Rough Rider condoms. <laughs> if I ever have a fucking autobiography, that's literally what I'm gonna call it. Spice ham sandwiches and Rough Rider condoms. But I digress. 
this palette, it's, it's fine. I don't know. She's just so alarming. The picture, the picture is so alarming. She's like a cross between the Joker models from Tim Burton's Batman. Like, do you remember that? That's a throwback there. Combined with the woman Elise from the Insidious movie at the end, when she unfortunately gets murdered, it's like those two had a baby and then popped out this woman that's on this palette. This is downright terrifying. I almost feel like it's the kind of palette that will trap your soul. So once you use it, it then sucks your soul into it and then releases the person that was previously on the packaging. It's like the ring tape of palettes. Between the dead eyes and the lack of nose, if this shit was crawling out of my closet at three o'clock in the morning, I'm gonna run the other way. So no, just no. We have now moved on to the weird, I don't know, I don't know. What are these weird food palettes? Food palettes come in all different kind of varieties, right? So you, you have really cute things like Glam Light, for example. Some Makeup Revolution packaging is really adorable, especially their food items. And that's cool. But then there's like a lot of rash of these other like smaller brands that pick this weird fucking imagery and create makeup lines with it. It's very, very strange. And they usually pair it with a color story that really makes no sense to what the fucking picture looks like. Like it's mind boggling, right? It's like these brands take stock images from the Cold War and just hope that nobody notices. For example, pop colon, I mean color. First of all, this is the most unappetizing bucket of popcorn I've ever seen. My husband put it best where he said it actually looked like somebody shit out some ostrich eggs. Okay. Now the inside color story, if it was on any other palette, I'd be like, oh, that's cute. Like, that's cool. But when you pair it in this fashion, it's like, why? What I think is the most offensive one is the banana split palette. The image is not even in focus. So did you take the image from the internet and you just didn't want to pay the licensing fee? It's not even a read. I'm just asking for a friend. Or what about the donut palette? Why the fuck would you just fill half the palette and then showcase this weird word perfect clip art of donuts? Why? The quality could be amazing. I'm not denying that. But when you pair the palette with this kind of imagery, it actually makes me want to run the other way. No, no, no. Anyway, that is all I got to say about that. The next palette is the KVD Vegan Love Palette. <sighs> all right, this palette's always perpetually on sale. Have you noticed that? I have never seen this palette ever at full price. I think when it actually came out, you could purchase the palette for $10 less. If that doesn't say something, I don't know what does. Now, I liked the brand's quality back in the day. I still have my Satan Center palette and I actually really like it. Pastel Goth and my Divine palette. I really enjoy one, the layouts, the color stories, the fucking overall aesthetic of it. Like I think those products are really, really nice. But somewhere along the way, the quality just really went down. Now, when the Vegan Love palette came out, it was essentially just a sad looking rainbow. KVD's packaging has always been really cool. But then when they released something like this, I was like, what the fuck is this? What is this? It's almost like they knew it was gonna be shitty. So they were like, just make the palette black, put a fucking heart in it, put a heart mirror on the inside of it. It's all good. So when you open the palette, you get this, you know, incredibly underwhelming rainbow color story. It's not quite the goth rainbow or the emo rainbow. It's more like the seasonal depression rainbow. The layout of the palette and the heart mirror is very reminiscent to like my first makeup palette. You know what I mean? Which by the way, every fucking day I get an email from this one seller who wants me to create a video using this palette and always in the text of the email it says something like it would be great if you could feature your daughter in the video now that sentence there's a lot to unpack there but i don't have children i've never let anything slither out of me but then i get this email so often that i start to question if i have a child anyway this is ugly this is sad and it's just so fucking kiddish. I can't. I just can't. I can't fuck with it. No. The next palette I want to talk about is from Anastasia Beverly Hills and it's the Carly Bible palette. Okay. Okay. So remember last year there was a rash of palettes released by ABH trying their best to look cool but ultimately just turning their brand into a joke. Yeah me neither. Anyway I feel bad for all the influencer palettes that were released 
previous year, I believe it was like Alyssa Edwards, then you had Jackie Aina, you had Carly Bible, and it was, it was very, very fast. And I felt like nobody really had a true moment to shine. But regardless, this palette is the fucking design of it is so fucking, it just gross. I'm not talking about the color story. I'm talking about that fucking drunk Pinterest they call the front of the palette. It's like mom had one too many pinos and decided to get her hot glue gun out and take out that bag of faux pearls so she could bedazzle that jean jacket she can't fit in. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Honestly, I wouldn't be so offended if the faux pearls were the same size and if it was actually aligned in a very even manner. I wouldn't be so offended. But what the fuck is this though? As for the color story, like I don't mind it or anything like that. Like, eh, I don't mind it. But when I did go to Sephora and see it in person, I was less like, this was kind of weird. It was just way too fucking glittery for me and it was very glitter bukkake and I was just like, no, thank you, ma'am. But anyway, yeah, this, this is a no. This is, this is a, how the fuck did this happen? especially when it was released right after the Jackie Aina palette that looks so sick. How do you follow up with that? You can't. That's for damn sure. Let's talk about the Tarte Spicy Bitch palette. What is this? What is this? Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'll say it. I actually like the Icy Bitch palette. However, this, this is fucking embarrassing. What I don't like about Tarte is their inability to be creative. It's like for every nice palette, which by the way, is very few and far between, they just release the same thing over and over again. Or they release something like this. This one is fucking offensive because I can imagine that they were probably all in the boardroom thinking of ways to like, you know, make a quick buck. And as per usual, I can imagine someone was like, I got it, I got it. Spicy bitch palette. No, no, Francine, Francine, hear me out, hear me out. People like peppers. People like eyeshadow. Have you been to Chili's before? People love fajitas. Long story short, they should have just called this the fucking Chili's palette. And you're welcome, because now you can't unsee it. But seriously though, you know what they did? They Googled Chili background and used the fourth fucking image in the Google search. Prove me wrong, kids. Prove me wrong. Well, that was enough of me yelling. Anyway, um, now I wanna hear from y'all. Let me know down below. What palettes do you think are truly just, just abominations? Because I would love to know. And please definitely go check out 90s Love Child and Smokey Glow's videos. Like I mentioned before, everything will be linked in the description box. And um, listen, if you feel so inclined and you have a YouTube channel, I invite you to do this video because it was a lot of fun. So let's roast stuff together. I wanna say thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it as always. Feel free to like, comment, hit that subscribe button, it's free, and hit that bell icon for notifications of all my future posts. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon to all my beautiful, lovely patron bubbies. I love your beautiful, adorable dumpling faces. Thank you so much as always, and I truly mean that from the bottom of my heart, for keeping this disgusting, disgusting, filthy garbage boat afloat. I couldn't do it without you. And I just wanna pinch your little cheeks to give you a Campbell Soup Kid moment. If you wanna know what's currently on my face along with where to get my merch and my podcast, everything will be listed in the description box as well. And with that said, Keep wearing a mask, keep washing your hands, keep fighting that good fight, and please remember to register to vote for the love of everything. Just please do that. I do not care about your political affiliation. I could care less. If you don't like what you're seeing, just vote. And I'll see you little pumpkins later. Bye.